I've got everything. You name it, I have it. Ligma. Ligma. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. So this for me is the first video I'm actually recording in the year 2019. Today is the 9th of January. And this video is going to come out on Friday, I guess. Today should be Friday, my boys. And as a matter of fact, I'm not feeling too well, actually. I've been sick for the past three weeks and I've got everything. You name it, I have it. Ligma, probably, diarrhea, the flu, whatsoever. It's just so fucking annoying. I'm not feeling too well, but I'm going to make a video still because, well, I have to. It's kind of my job at the moment to make videos at least a bit. So here goes. We are going to take a look at the basal problem today. The most delicious of all problems where we want to find out the value of the sum right here, the sum over all the squares. Okay, so how could we tackle this problem? Well, accidentally, Steve, Black Pen Red Pen, is doing a little series on Fourier transforms at the moment. So um, I want to take a little look at that, and at first I want you guys to recall the definition of the Fourier transform, namely that we can express a function f of x as nothing but some a naught over two plus an infinite sum running from n equals to one to infinity of, well, now we have those Fourier coefficients, a n, and then we have a cosine wave. What well, arguments are on the cosine wave? Well, it definitely depends on your interval you are in. That's why we are going to write it in a, um, in a more general way, namely n times pi times x over l, where l is the boundary we are in. For example, pi, this is the boundary we are going to act in later on, plus some other Fourier coefficient. So this right here is just the superposition of all the even parts, you could say, all the even cosine waves. Bn times the sine with the same argument in here. So n times pi times x over l. So this is just our generalized Fourier series. And well, what is our l exactly? It depends on which function we are going to do this Fourier transform right here. We are going to take a look at x squared today. So the Fourier transform of x squared on the interval negative pi to pi. Where you see the good thing is our x squared is continuous everywhere on well this whole real number line down here. So the cool thing is we can actually use a closed interval right here from negative pi to pi. And well, now you have to consider what a0, a n, and b n actually are. Let's start off with a0. A0 over 2, let's put it that way, a0 over 2 is nothing but, well, 1 over 2 times l. We are going to plug our l later on in the game into here. l is nothing but our pi times an, in an integral running from negative l to l of, well, what do we have? We are going to have f of x dx. So this is just the first coefficient we have right here. And if we plug our l in, which is nothing but pi, we are going to end up with 1 over 2 times pi times an integral from negative pi to pi of x squared dx. So this is what we are going to work with. And you see this right here is an even integrand. If we plug negative x into here, well, this is just negative x squared, this is just x squared, so our integrand stays as it is. So we can safely rewrite this as nothing but the integral from 0 to pi, but two times with those twos cancelling out. Integrating this is really quite easy. We are going to end up with, well, this factor of 1 over pi, and then we have x to the third power over 3 from 0 to pi. Well, 0 plugged into here is just going to vanish. It's as easy as it is. If we plug pi into here, we have pi cubed over pi, making just pi squared over 3. So this right here is actually our a0 over 2. So we have found this out, and now we are going to take a look at our a n right here. What exactly is our a n? Well, it's defined as 1 over l times the integral from negative l to l of, well, f of x. This is just a continuous superposition, you can say, of all those cosine waves. Cosine of, well, this very argument right here. n times pi times x over l dx. If you have watched Black Pen Red Pen's videos, this might seem familiar to you. 
Now we can plug our pi once again into our L. This pi and this pi is going to cancel out to just an argument of n times x and well all the other stuff is just how it is. So this is going to vary to 1 over pi. Integral from negative pi to pi of well x squared times the cosine of n times x integrated with respect to x. Once again this right here is an even integral and cosine of negative x is just cosine of x and this function right here is just even once again. So let's rewrite this as well, 2 times the integral from 0 to pi. The easiest way to integrate something like this is to use integration by parts actually. So we need something to differentiate and something to integrate plus minus we actually need 4 iterations if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 4 iterations and let's differentiate x squared. This is going to vary to 2x and then to 2 and then to 0. So this is just how it is. I hope you are familiar with this notation right here, this tabular integration. And we would like to integrate the cosine of n times x. Integrating the cosine is going to vary to the sine function but with 1 over n in front because we have this argument right here. So 1 over n times sine of n times x. Same spiel once again. Integrating cosine leaves us with, uh, integrating the sine leaves us with negative cosine. So this is 1 over n squared with negative sine cosine of n times x. And integrating this once again leaves us with negative 1 over n to the third power sine of n times x. This is a lot of <coughs> integration by parts and now we can just start off. So multiplying this together, this together, this together and then we are basically done. And then we just have to apply our upper and lower bounds. So we now have 2 over pi times a bunch of stuff. So at first we have x squared times the sine of n times x over n. Then we have negative and negative is going to cancel out to positive 1. So we have positive 2 times x cosine of n times x over n squared and now we have negative this is going to stay negative 2 times the sine of n times x over n to the third power from 0 to pi okay so that was really quite easy integrating stuff like this is child's play the really cool thing is if we plug 0 into those parts all of those actually this is just going to vanish because well those have an x up here in the numerator so this is just going to vanish and sine of zero is just zero so everything right here is going to cancel out nicely. The really cool thing is our sine wave is periodic with a periodicity periodicity? Do you say something like this? I really don't know but our sine function is periodic in pi meaning since n is a natural number, sine of 0 times pi is sine of 0, this is just 0. Sine of 3 times pi is still going to be 0. So all those terms of sine are going to vanish when we plug in this upper bound right here. Now we are going to end up with, okay, now we have 2 times 2 is 4. And then we are going to plug pi into here, but pi and 1 over pi is going to cancel out. So this is good. And we have this n squared part right here. Now we have cosine of n times pi. What is cosine of n times pi? Well, if you take a look at the cosine wave, um, I'm going to put it here. It's going to look something like this right here. Okay? This is 0 times pi, which is 1. This is 1 times pi. This is negative 1. This is 2 times pi. This is positive 1. So we are going to alternate between 1 and negative 1 all, uh, all the time. So this is going to leave us with negative 1 to the nth power. Okay, I hope you can see where this came from. And thus, we have actually evaluated our a n right here. Now we have to find out our b n's and then we are basically done. So next up are our odd Fourier coefficients, you could say. So how is our b n defined? Well, it's pretty similar to our a n actually. So b n is being defined as, well, just 1 over l times the integral from negative l to l f of x and then we have the sine of n times pi times x over l integrated with respect to x. Once again, if we plug our pi into here, we are going to end up with 1 over pi times the integral from negative pi to pi of well x squared times the sine of n times x integrated with respect to x. And here's the really cool thing about Fourier series. Most of the time we are going to end up with one of those 
parts vanishing completely. Because, well, x squared is even, but sine of negative x is negative sine of x. So if we plug negative x into here, we are going to end up with the negative integrand integrated over in symmetric integral, which is not good because then this thing is going to value a to exactly zero. It's actually really good, at least for us, not for the integral. This thing right here just vanished. <laughs> I'm not feeling so good, Mr. Stark. No, seriously, I'm not feeling so good, but I still have to produce some videos. So this whole part right here is going to vanish. This is good. And you see, I've written out everything except for this part. If we plug our L into here, this is n times pi times x over pi. So those pi's are going to cancel out to just, well, cosine of n times x. Okay, coolio. So this worked out quite nicely, actually. And, well, <laughs> Now we can actually solve our basal problem right here on the interval from negative pi to pi. What happens actually if we plug in pi into our x right here? Let's, let's do this real quick. So pi squared is then going to be pi squared over 3 plus an infinite sum running from n equals to 1 to infinity of 4 times negative 1 to the nth power over n squared. If we plug pi into here, this is just the same situation as before just negative 1 to the nth power, this alternating part right here. But what is negative 1 to the nth power times negative 1 to the nth power? This is going to result in negative 1 to the 2 nth power. And whenever we raise negative 1 to an even power, it's just going to result in positive 1. So actually, this thing right here is just positive 1. Okay. Now I'm going to bring this to the other side, so subtracting pi squared over 3 on both sides. So that's equivalent to saying we have 4 times, I'm bringing this constant 4 to the outside, so why the hell not? From n equals to 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared. Here's our boy, here's our main player for today, being equal to pi squared minus pi squared over 3. Calculating this is really quite easy, just advance this non-existent fraction right here by 3 over 3 and this is going to vary a to 2 times pi squared over 3 and now we can just divide both sides by 4 right here okay so we have calculated this this is going to be a 12 but 2 over 12 is just 6 so our sum actually of 1 over n squared is nothing but pi squared over 6. I hope you can see where this came from, just straight through calculations. So if you got to this point, you're already quite well um, equipped to solve this very problem right here. And yeah, this is actually the value, it's a really surprising value is you sum up a bunch of natural numbers, reciprocals of natural numbers, and you end up with pi squared over 6. So this is quite cool. I'm going to provide you with another little snack. Namely, what happens if we plug in zero into here? Okay, so that's another cool thing. Then we are going to end up with zero being equal to, well, pi squared over three, plus four times the sum, running from n equals to one to infinity of, well, negative one to the nth power over n squared, cosine of zero times n is cosine of zero, and this is nothing but one, so this is just how it is. Now we can bring this sum, for example, to the other side and divide both sides by 4. So why not do this? Since 4 is not equal to 0, we are going to end up with pi squared over 12 being nothing but, well, negative this sum running from 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the nth power over n squared. And if you are a little aesthetic Nazi, <laughs> you can bring this negative 1 to the inside to just raise this power by a little 1. And I don't know the exact name of this series right here. Let's just call it alternating basal problem. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. But yeah, this sum is actually evaluating to pi squared over 12, which is actually quite cool if you ask me. And then we are done. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please like and subscribe and recommend the channel if you like. You know how you can support this channel. You can support it in many different ways. I hope this video was still okay, even though I'm once again sick as always. And well, I guess up until the next video, have a basal day, my boys. See ya. It's not your